Hello, uh, welcome to part two of this uh, series. So, uh, or part four, five. Uh, so, in this uh, part, we will uh, start uh, working with the data. So, in the first uh, part, we were scraping the data from Facebook. We downloaded and saved it into a pickle file, and now we're going to uh, load it and clean it, and then work with it. So uh, for this part, I will not use the spider that I used in part one, uh, but I will use something called uh, notebooks, Jupyter notebooks. So it's like a web interface for a Python code. Uh, it works better in analyzing data. So uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, the way you run it is you run from CMD uh, Jupyter notebook, and it will start a local server that you can go to here. So let me remind you how the data looked like from part one. So uh, in the first part we got data, uh, data in a list. Uh, each uh, post was a uh, part of this list, and it was nested. So each post contains like comments, and comments contain data, and data contains the comments itself. And so this is how it worked. Uh, but now we will work with painless data frame. Data frame is a new data structure that uh, you will get familiar with hopefully. So let's get started. So let's start by loading the data. So I'll run this code. And yeah, I forgot to run the imports first. So import and load the data. And right now I have uh, loaded data. Let's check what is this. So yeah. This supposes, supposedly it's a list, so if I type loaded data, yep, it's a list, so let's uh, see how it looks like, just to remember. So it, it looks like this, it's like a nested uh, dictionary, so... You have comments, you have summary, you have created time. Um, but we want to convert it from this uh, nested dictionary to a data frame, a banded data frame. So that's what we're gonna do. So we imported bandas as a PD and we will use something in bandas. It's called IL, the JSON, JSON normalize. Basically what it does is it converts from the nested into uh, columns, you'll see how it looks like in a second. So if I run this and I save it into a variable called if2 data frame and let's see data frame that had what it looks like. So um, yeah, without printed uh, printed in this table format. So as you see here, head uh, prints only uh, the top five rows as you see here so we bring the top five rows just to see how the data looks like and we see we have all the data that we had but in a table format so read the time each row is a post the id of the post and the number of likes and the message which is the text of the post so what we're gonna do next is we want to clean it up a little bit as you see here there's a lot of unused column like ranked we're not gonna use those so let's uh let's clear them out so how we can do this okay let me show you what df2.columns does so this returns a list of uh the columns of the of this data frame. So, for example, if, if we choose the if we give it index zero, it will give us the first column, which is comments of data, comments of data. So, okay. So we want to drop some columns that are uh, unused. So to drop the columns, we we use a function called drop. So the way it works is. We uh, type the name of our data frame, which is df2.drop. Then we give it the name of the column. For example, to drop the f this first column, comments the data. We take it and we 
say drop and I'll give it an error it's not contained in an axis so we need to specify the axis too so uh, one means uh, I'm talking columns, zero means I'm talking rows okay as you see it returned a new data frame uh, with the first row dropped so if I want uh, so let's run this again to check how did it look like okay so it, uh, it is the same so this is because it uh, returned a new a new data frame it didn't override the old one so in order to do that I'll tell it in place equal true and this will make it uh, drop in the same data frame so if I do this it did not return a new data frame and if, uh, if I type div2.head I'll get here without the first data frame there is another way though more efficient way to drop the columns which is uh, by indices so as you know df2.columns returns the name of the columns and I'll just give it a list of indices so I want to drop the f in index number 0 number 1 and I also want to drop number okay what is this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so 0 1 5 6 and 7 in place equal true and I'm talking columns and let's run this and let's see how the data looks like from here yeah as you see I'll get the number of comments uh, curated time ID so I dropped all the unnecessary columns so in order to we want to rename uh, this uh, two columns which are the comments uh, total count and the likes total count so in order to do this uh, we're going to type the name of our data frame which is df2 we can use a function called rename and the way this work is we give it uh, columns and, and the new values for the names of the columns so we want to give it a key and a value the key is the, the old name and the value is our new name so this comments total count we want it to be called total comments And that's it. And of course, don't forget in place equal true because we want to override the old data frame. So let's run it and then check head. And sure enough, it is changed. Let's do the same for the likes. Uh, likes, those total counts. And total likes and let's check again okay so there you have it we have the data much cleaner than we started with and now we're ready to analyze so we do that in the next video